says calculate the energy, this time in kilojoules per mole, of one mole of electromagnetic radiation with a wavelength of 427 nanometers. So this is going to actually start out with a similar calculation to last time. We're going to use the equation that we built that says energy equals uh, Planck's constant times the speed of light over wavelength. And let's just go ahead and plug those in. 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds. Uh, speed of light or speed of all electromagnetic radiation. And our wavelength where I've substituted times 10 to the minus 9 meters for nanometers. So let's go ahead and pull that up. equal minus and uh, so this is relatively close to the last calculation we did as far as nanometers we get a relatively close answer and what you'll find is that for visible wavelengths and those are between four and seven hundred nanometers uh, we'll do enough calculations that uh, we'll start to know that we've done all the math correctly when we get a minus 19 area exponents. So, um, uh, but it is easy to mess up these calculations and we'll start to build up our chemistry intuition about this. So to three sig figs, it's gonna be 4.66 times 10 to the minus 19. And we said, sure, that has units of joules but that's also gonna be joules per photon. And we're gonna need this joules per photon as we convert it from joules per photon to kilojoules per mole. And really it's gonna be kilojoules per mole of photons. Let's uh, set that up. So starting with 4.66 times 10 to the minus 19. And here, I'm, uh, this is a, uh, has a numerator and a denominator, so in my unit conversion problem, I will set it up like that. I have joules per photon. And uh, again, I typically, when I do these, I add the one. You don't need the one, but um, uh, it just makes me feel nice to know that there's a number there. Uh, anyway, that's just me. So, um, Easiest one to do as far as unit conversions as you go from joules to kilojoules. So 1,000 joules is one kilojoule. And our unit conversion factor goes above and below it, just like that. Now the next one is a unit conversion that we haven't done before specifically for photons. But as we said before, uh, if you use Avogadro's number for the number of items in a mole, it can be... Um, it can be atoms, it can be molecules, it can be ions, uh, it can even be tennis balls, though that's a lot of tennis balls. Um, but now it's going to be photons. So since I have a number of photons down here, I will put Avogadro's number, 6.022, times 10 to the 23rd photons. is one mole of photons. And we'll be doing this kind of calculation a number of times uh, yeah, in this uh, week's homework. Now let's see, I cancel out my joules, I have kilojoules, I cancel out my units of photons and I'm left with moles, specifically moles of photons. Uh, as far as the calculations go for this, I went back to this, I'm gonna start with 4.66 times 10 to the minus 19. I'm gonna divide it by 1,000. I'm gonna multiply it times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And I get 200, well the three sig figs, 281. And my units are gonna be kilojoules per mole. And that's our final answer for this question. And 
This is our first, um, perhaps, uh, calculation that shows that the energy of one mole of photons is actually very similar to the energy for a mole or stored in a mole of covalent bonds. Uh, we haven't talked about that, but we have talked about the energies of reactions. And so I'll just make a little note here. So this energy is similar to the energies involved in chemical reactions. Is there a question? So the note is this energy is similar to the energy of chemical reactions. And we'll see that theme come up uh, again and again. Okay. Any questions about this problem? Okay. Okay, uh, so let me stop recording. Ooh. Hit the wrong button.